Hello all my beautiful Disney friends and welcome back to my channel. So here it is. Here is the big reveal. If you guys have been watching me for a while then you know for the last few months I have been alluding to the fact that I wanted to start something new and different over here on my channel. So today it is here. The big reveal is here. I'm going to be doing a whole new series. Although if you've seen the thumbnail you already know what I'm doing. On Disney theory history and makeup. Yes, you guys, I am so excited. So I decided to take my love of Disney history, theory, conspiracies, and my love of doing makeup and marriaging, marriaging, marriaged, marriaged, the two of them together to create this whole new series. So I am very, very excited to be doing this with you guys, for you guys. So if you guys are interested in any type of video like this, then please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button down below and turn notifications on. That way you can be notified anytime I put out a new video. I will be putting out these videos every Tuesday and I will be uploading a bonus video on Fridays. So make sure you stay tuned for those as well. So I'm really excited. I'm honestly a little nervous about this. I feel like it's a lot of pressure. Like this is my first one. I want to do it. I want to do it right. I want to do it justice. So I'm like, I'm really excited and a little nervous for this as well. So when I was thinking, hmm, what video am I going to do? What am I going to start with? What's my very first video going to be in this series? And I thought, well, let's start with me and my Disney history. So the very first time that I went to Disney, my little six-year-old self was so excited. We were there for rope drop. We got there, we went in, and we got in line for one of the most popular rides, Pirates of the Caribbean. So I thought, okay, perfect. Let's make the very first video about Pirates of the Caribbean. Now I could do a lot with this because there's a lot of Disney theory, mystery, and conspiracies about this ride. But let's open with one very famous, controversial, and honestly hard to track down topic. That word was topic, by the way. One about pirates, treasures, and bones. Yes, my friends, we're talking about real life, or actually not real or alive, dead real skeletal remains on Pirates of the Caribbean. Before I continue, I just want to let you guys know that everything I will be using will be linked down in the description if you guys want to go and check that out. Other than that, let's get into this story. So I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about this story. It is one that is quite popular, but is actually very difficult to find a lot of information on. So after a few weeks of digging, I think I've come up with a proper story and a proper timeline of everything that actually happened and how this whole story got its legs, literally, about there being actually real skeletons on the ride, Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland. So before we get into all that, you do have to backtrack a little bit and I have to give you a bit of a backstory. So Disneyland in California opened up in 1955 on what would later become known as Black Sunday because it opened to horrible, horrible conditions. The park only opened a year and a day after it was set to actually open and release and it was it was a disaster. There's no other way to put it. The park itself was actually overcrowded due to a ticket scam. So they actually ended up with double capacity than what they were actually supposed to have. Food stands sold out of food by around lunchtime. It was crowded. Rides were breaking down left and right. They were not just breaking down, but they were actually unsafe to ride. So most of them were shut down completely. And it was so incredibly hot that people were getting stuck to the tarmac. Okay, like people weren't getting stuck, their shoes were getting stuck. That'd be a different story. Now, although most people would see this as a failure, our favorite man himself, Walt Disney, did not. He saw this as a success and a way to keep moving forward. Now, shortly after this, and still with the actual success of the opening of Disneyland, Walt decided that he wanted to open up bigger parts of the park. And this came to the opening of New Orleans Square. Now, the whole kind of idea for opening New Orleans Square was to get into a lot of old roots. Disney loved anything to do with America. He was very much a patron. 
and he just really loved Louisiana. He loved jazz music, um, and the entire thing was supposed to incorporate jazz, a haunted mansion, and a walk through Pirates Wax Museum. Walt Disney and his artist Mark Davison actually came up with an idea for the Wax Museum and they actually got fairly far as far as it was concerned. They came up with art, they came up with what they wanted to have, what they wanted to include, and they were pretty confident with what they needed. So as they were building the restaurant, the Blue Bayou, Blue Bayou, the Blue Bayou, they had decided that they were going to put this wax museum underneath of it. So it was actually going to be in the basement of the Blue Bayou restaurant. So you can go, you can grab some food, and then once you're done, you just go underneath and you check out this wax museum. And as cool as this all was, and as much as they were ready with their plans, this actually all went on halt when Walt was actually offered the 1964 and 1965 World Fair. Everything was actually just completely paused so that Walt could work on those attractions. And the attractions that he ended up coming up with for those were iconic ones like Small World, Carousel of Progress, and Mr. Lincoln. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln. And the thing about this was, these weren't just rides. These were not just a regular attraction. These were advances in technology. I mean, it took the normal, regular, you know, wax figure and it created an entire person. It created an entire animatronic in the animatronic world as we now know it. Some Terminator crap going on. So when he was done, he came home and he realized that when he was going to do pirates, he was not just going to do a wax museum. I mean, would you go back and start doing a wax museum after you created the best brand new technology there was in the world? No. So Walt wanted to actually incorporate the animatronics that he was using for like Small World, Carousel of Progress, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, and he also wanted to use the boat system that he was using in Small World, combine those two things and create a dark ride involving pirates. So Walt brought this idea back and he put it in front of Mark Davids and Mark was basically like, Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. We'll do that. That's, that's a great idea. Mark already wasn't extremely thrilled with the idea of doing a wax museum since they were actually going to be changing it. And it wasn't just going to be the life of pirates. They were actually coming up with an entire script and everything to walk through it anyways to make it a little bit more interesting other than the fact that, you know, pirates were bad guys and they plundered and in the end, they died. So Mark and his team came up with this idea for a storyboard and they basically took little snippets of every piece of the ride that you were going through. So even though you weren't able to see the entire production, you knew exactly what was happening. Hey, they are breaking into this town. Hey, Carlos, he's getting drowned. Hey, those wenches, they're getting sold off. Not gonna start. So as they actually started building the ride and putting everything together, they quickly realized that they actually didn't have enough space to put everything in. I mean, they were essentially going from taking a small little wax museum that was a walkthrough and putting an entirely huge giant ride into it. So they had to come up with an idea of making this entrance work, but adding to it. So they started to do what would become very, very common with Disney, where you would have a facade of an entrance and the entire ride the entire thing would be happening in a warehouse that they built in the back. It's kind of like a mullet really. You enter through the business part on the top and it's nothing but a party in the back. So what was actually happening was where you were actually loaded on in the beginning, with the beginning of the actual ride, you get onto the boats and you were traveling through essentially a hallway until you got down through the waterfall and into the actual scene where the pirates are actually stopping and plundering the city. They're actually breaking the walls, there's cannons going off, all of that. So they had a storyboard and a storyline for everything that happened from the from the ship scene on to the end of the ride where you're basically seeing the dog and all of the guys inside trying to get the dog all you know that. So that was the actual storyboard that they had. They set up all the animatronics and they were able to have the story from there. 
Now, when Walt saw this, he was so excited. He loved how all this was coming together. He absolutely loved the animatronics. He loved the voiceovers. All of it was working out absolutely perfectly. It was the way he was envisioning it. But they had a problem. They still had this entire cavern that was completely empty. They essentially had this hallway that connected the beginning of the ride to the actual start of the ride, and they had nothing in between. So they asked Walt Disney, hey, what are we supposed to do with this cavern? And Walt, being the amazing, creative, visionary that he was, said, I don't know, fill it with something. Genius. So they did. They filled it with something. They decided to come up with this idea of having basically a skeleton graveyard. It was going to basically imply that, you know, Pirates in life, they're not really good people, are they? They're not that great. They were going around, they were plundering, and they were thieving, and they were killing, and they were taking all this treasure, and they were hiding it. And in the end, most of them were either killed during their life of piracy, or they were just greedy, and they just kind of died surrounded by their gold. So they were creating this skeletal grotto, not to be mistaken for Ariel's grotto, this afterlife effect of you can't have your cake and eat it too. So Mark and his team started to, you know, fill in the space. They started to bring in um, plastic skeletons and skeletons of the time were very, very cartoony. They were very plastic. They were very white, very stark looking. And even after you age them by basically dragging them through the mud, they still just didn't have that authentic Disney feel. So it left them thinking, what the heck are we going to do? How are we actually going to make these skeletons look more real? Someone from the production team came up with this great idea of hey, let's call UCLA and see if we can borrow any of their skeletons. Let's see if they have any cadavers that we can maybe bring on over here. It's being creative, I guess. So someone, and I honestly couldn't really find out who, I mean, I'll have more information on that after, but I really couldn't find out who made the call, but someone basically made the call like, hey, UCLA, I'm over here from Disney. We're making a new ride over here and we need some skeletal remains. Do you think you can maybe drop off a truckload of them for us? UCLA is all like, hey, no problem, Disney. We're on our way with a bunch of dead people. I mean, I obviously don't know if that's how it happened, but I'm thinking that's pretty much it. So I don't know exactly how many skeletons they were actually picking up, how many they actually use. I couldn't find any of that information. But nevertheless, like, they ended up with a bunch of skeletons and they put them all over the beginning of the ride in the grotto, dressed them all up, and there you have Skeletal Grotto in Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, I mean, I'm no expert here, but I feel like that's kind of some type of violation somewhere. Like, I just feel like when you go to be a cadaver, that's not really in your contract. I feel like that's just, that's just not right. Not to mention, I mean, honestly, how many health code violations are they violating right there? I mean, you have a cockroach in your kitchen, you're going to get shut down. Meanwhile, the Blue Bayou has, you know, literally dead people, dead people decaying just a few feet away from them. And it's like, Nah, you guys are good. Go ahead. Enjoy your meal. Uncle Ken's over there decaying, but you enjoy that burger there. So I actually did try to do some more research into this. So I actually went on to UCLA's um, website and I downloaded their cadaver agreement. And inside of it, I really couldn't find anything that said that they can, you know, obviously use your body for entertainment purposes. But this was something that was actually very commonly used back in the day. I mean, the movie Poltergeist is an extreme example as well. Um, it was used for other entertainment rides and in a lot of movies, in fact. Now, although I was not able to see where it said they could use their body for, you know, entertainment purposes or sell you off to Disney, it did say in there that once they were actually done using your body for their own purposes, they were actually able to basically do whatever they want to your remains and discard of them 
however they feel fit. So basically, once they ha you hand over your body or you hand over your dead friend to UCLA, you're not getting them back. You don't know what's happening to them. You don't know what they're actually being used for. And when they're done with them, they're gone. There's no, there's no getting them back. Could you imagine, like literally, you are one of these people back in like 1967 and you're on this ride and you're literally floating by a great grandpa over there and you know you don't even know it like these people obviously didn't know that these were real like it wasn't a thing it didn't actually start coming out until later that Disney actually used real life bodies and even at that point it was all hearsay even now if you actually try to find something on it it's very very difficult and there's really still no actual proof other than a few small things that you're actually able to put together on the internet about these bodies and where they came from. Like I said, I actually did try to find out, you know, how many bodies there were and where they all came from and were they male, female, all of those things. And I really couldn't find anything on it other than the fact that Disney did use some bodies that they got from UCLA, which honestly kind of just makes me feel like this is, again, it's not an actual story. Like, this thing actually happened. You were literally floating. You were literally floating by dead people. You're... Enjoy your ride. Maybe you'll get here someday, too. Maybe if you're lucky enough, Disney will pick up your cadaver and you could be over here on Pirates as well. Ew. So although Disney does not give, again, an exact timeline on this or anything because, again, can't really find any information on it, it is suspected through video evidence that they actually took out all the original skulls and bones around the early 1990s. If you look at some of the video footage, you can kind of tell the difference. They are definitely different. A lot of the scenes were actually revamped themselves and the original skulls were skulls and skeletons were taken out and replaced with more up-to-date, um, realistic dummies. However, although it was said that all of the skeletons were taken out, there was still one to this day to be rumored to still be a part of the original pirate crew. There's one skeleton in the bed chamber scene that is actually attached to the headboard. And rumor says that, that this is actually still the original skeleton and it is the only one that is still remaining from the original group. And for whatever reason, they decided to keep it on, but change the rest of them. Now, as much fun as it is to actually think this and believe this, I kind of have a hard time believing this myself. I mean, after all, why would they take the rest of them out, but they left that one? What was so special about that one that they needed to leave it there? So again, for years, many rumors over this skeleton have remained and people still think that this is an actual skeleton, that this is a part of the actual crew from the original skeletons and they left it there. Which I honestly hard, find hard to believe because why would they redo all these scenes? Why would they redo all of it? And I mean, even redo the actual headboard where this skull is there and attached to, but they would leave that original one there but replace all the other ones. I found it hard to believe, but again, that's Disney, that's Disney mystery and Disney lore. But as to leave this to chance or not, I decided to look into this a bit further. And although I was not really getting anywhere on the internet, I decided to turn my efforts and talk to an actual skeletal doctor to see if I could get any more insights on this. After speaking to a skeletal doctor and chiropractor, Dr. Lance Willard, he examined the photos and he said, although it is very difficult to tell just from photos and not being able to actually examine the skull itself, he believed it to be a mold or an imprint of the original skull. Although there are many things that are still very much the same, some of the patterning and decaying of the skull is not exactly the same, and so it led him to believe that it was actually just a mold. And honestly, I kind of think the same thing too. I think it's just, I think it would be a mold. I don't know why. Again, why? Why would they change all the other ones and just leave that one? Again, I just feel like there's just too many things weird there. It's weird enough they're already floating by dead bodies, and it's weird that they would redo the whole scene but leave that one. And I mean, again, there has to be something, like, gotta be some kind of protection about people. Like, 
Okay, sorry, I just threw on some liner and my lashes. So, Disney did say that they returned all the skeletal remains back to UCLA and UCLA apparently disposed of them properly. I even heard a story where they t returned them back to their countries of origin. Like, where are you getting these skeletons from? Aren't they just people from, like, in that area? Like, countries of origin, where are you getting these things from? Mexico? But that, my friends, is basically the story of how there were actually really dead people in Hearts of the Caribbean. Like, honestly, could you imagine, like, being that person? Like, were you one of these people? Were you on this ride and you were floating by dead people? Like, did that bother you? Like, ugh, I don't know. I had to go into a cadaver lab for medical school once and we had to, like, look at them for, like, medical reasons. And, God, I had hard enough time with that. I don't know if I could actually, if I could actually go on that ride and be like, oh, like, hey, we're just floating by dead people. Like that would, I think that would really bother me. I don't know. I don't like it. I think it's creepy. And when you're thinking about basically the happiest place on earth, you're not thinking about walking by a bunch of dead people. I don't know. That's just, I don't like it. All right, so here we have it. Here is my final look. Um, yeah, I think it turned out all right. It's honestly not my super most favorite look I've ever done in my life, but for my first time doing it on video and trying to talk, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm obsessed with this lip. It's so much fun. I really, really like this one. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like the makeup look? Did you like the story? Do you like these kinds of things? Because I got more. I got more of them planned for you guys. I do kind of have a few ideas for the next few weeks of what topics I want to cover and I've already started researching those so I'm really excited for those but if you guys have anything that you want to include for me whether it be about the park certain people in the park that are around the park cast members movie theories I have a bunch of things that I want to cover with you guys if you guys have any ideas or any suggestions please pop those down below I will definitely get to them take a look at them and see what kind of fun stories we can come up with them. Other than that, that does it for me today. I wish I had some place to go, but I'm gonna go upstairs and make supper now because that's the life we're living. Again, I hope everyone's just good. Hope everyone is safe, healthy, and happy. Happy New Year's to everyone. Hope it was an amazing New Year's. It's been quite the first few weeks of January already, but here we are. Let's make it the best year yet or something like that. All right, my beautiful Disney friends, that does it for me today. No matter what you guys are doing, I hope you're having the most magical day ever, and I will talk to you all real soon.